This piece is called Preventing Cruelty to Children. When you are tortured as a child, it takes a while to even realize that this, this consistently heavy and uncomfortable vibration, ever present in your chest and behind your eyes and teeth, does not reside in everyone, and that it has a name, shame. You realize that your usual inner sensation is known academically as self-hatred and even low self-esteem. When you are tortured as a child, you are always terrified with self-loathing, certain that everyone knows that you are the lowest of the very low. After all, they told you so. They told you so. But you read stories, watch films where little children are treated with great respect and appreciation. When you are tortured by your carers, you try desperately to ape the behaviors and gestures that seem to create smiles of admiration and you fail. All you perceive or believe you see are more embarrassed and disgusted faces staring back at you because tortured children assume that they lack even basic value. The belief that they are unworthy of Adoration comes through and the reality of negative attention begun by their carers blooms hateful fumes throughout most of their mental compartments, the, the intimate area that houses me. To escape that torment, me retreats from her senses trying to find a way of not being present. And there are so many choices in this world. Choose your poison, your addiction and many are in fact socially acceptable. Many children decide in earnest after glancing at the global culture to learn to be cool. Well, anyone can see that this is the only way to get respect when your own sense of self-respect is absent. Be an opiate for the masses. Get some fame, yeah? But seeking approval by any means necessary is a perilous narrow path of stinging stones. The stony path leads you nowhere by the nose. You end up tripping about what everyone else thinks. Finally choking on the noose of regret, wondering about joy, joy, that elusive secret. <coughs> well, being is your secret too. Well-being is your secret true. However, perhaps your childhood behavior modification program told you to concentrate on the failings of others when you're trying to uncover the source of your own hurt. Your examples showed you how to blame, project shame. You're an expert. This ensures a perpetuation of the salty sins that poison the soup of your existence. Your relentless and unexplained central self-hatred, which you learn much later is your core in chains, your inner cornerstone, cannot be born, cannot be coped with. You avoid this seething, screaming mass of false yous by adopting compulsions and actions that your child self has chosen as shambolic protection. When you are tortured as a child, you interpret people's expressions and use that faulty interpretation as your reflection. Your early emotional reflexes were trained to blame, blame, and you blame yourself regardless of circumstances. But that burns. You just want to be rid of the red hot potato of toxic shame buried blame, and so you may project your suffering onto others, passing your own terror forward. And this is how you are taught to deal with bad feelings. It is the way you know how to protect yourself. Now listen, lack of love is a communicable disease. Please, heal yourself. For those who feel compelled to perpetuate the worst kinds of abuse and hate, seek healing or seek death. What else? When you were rarely told that you are nice just as you are, if you still beat yourself up bloody inside to motivate your moves outside, you were tortured as a child. If you were given smiles and kindnesses only when you performed, if at all, and not as a norm, you were abused. If you're still confused as to what boundaries are, if you let others treat 
and speak to you in ways that define the terms unkind and untrue. You need help. We all do. At this point, I hesitate to define the disparate natures of abuse. Most tortured children who survive are the first to deny that anything really happened. They are often co-opted into the lie of being nice and conforming to expectations. But you may have been whipped or denied the right to your own body and sexuality. A little girl once told my friend and me in a poem that the man made milk run down her legs. We all wept. We all wept. Your natural instincts and choices may have been suppressed, vilified, reviled out of existence. You may have been mocked for your smile or called fathead and stupid all the time. Perhaps you were left to cry all by yourself, all alone, too many times. Maybe you were fed vile and healthy food and denied the right to school. Perhaps you remember being left out in the rain for hours while nursing a broken limb, feeling like you were dying and wondering, how foul you must have been to be treated so badly. And you survived, only just. And only just is not enough. So many people who were tortured as children are enthralled to some inner demonic cabal that moans constant revolting dirgers about who you think you are. In other words, your internal dialogue is incandescently, violently inimical to you. Good news is, you are the wicked witch Within, please hear me out. You are the one now wielding the whip and it's all down to the fiendish programming you picked up as a kid. You have mistaken your disenfranchised child mind for the bad guys and so you beat on yourself. I must stress, those so-called inner demons are the wild-eyed, crying child driven into the wilderness and it is she who still tries to survive. Think how brave and beautiful she, you, must be. You can forgive yourself once you accept that you are doing your very best. And may I say, let me be the one to tell you now that your best was excellent. I'm telling you now, you did fantastic considering everything. Listen, it's like a rule. Anything said with real love must be true. Thank you.